Oh, it's good stuff. I don't know. I, I'm getting into the music, I swear. Uh, Twitch is telling me that apparently there's lower subscription prices in Australia, which is great because I don't have subscriptions enabled on my channel. Uh, sure. What's the what's the lower prices? Who is affect uh, this affects people? Does that mean they? Uh, as a creator, you get less money, or...? Okay. The creator must stream a minimum of five hours. Creators will be asked to stream no more than 200 hours per month if they normally stream this much. That's interesting. Alright, anyways. Hello, everyone. My name is Beandale. Welcome to The Beandale Show. I'm so glad that you're watching, if you are. And if you're not watching, then I don't know what on earth you're doing to listen to this, but I'm sure. Uh, today is the... 9th of August 2021. This is the first stream of the month for me. I did not stream last last week. I had to just, you know, recoup. I had been feeling very trash mentally, I guess, like before before last week. And usually, uh, and, and I don't know if this is like an actual phenomenon, but like usually when I'm feeling really down or I get like ill in one way, I usually get a bunch of like other like sicknesses and stuff. And one of them was a massive freaking canker sore, like, in the mouth that was just like, yeah, nah, I'm not, like, I'm not able to talk for two hours straight. And on top of that, like, I, I just was completely out of it. It was not very, you know, not a very nice time. So, I just decided, let's, let's have a bit of a rest. Let's have a bit of a go. Anyway, I'm, I'm back into it. I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the effort. And I'm feeling the pain because... 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 There it is. We're getting back into things. So, I remember, uh, two weeks ago. So not last week, but two weeks ago. Uh... I've, uh, fought the fifth gym. I've gotten five badges. I remember battling hard for that one. I apparently have not healed. Did I really sweep it? I can't remember if I did sweep it. I remember getting wrecked. That was, that was something that happened first. Oh, okay. So... Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I feel like, uh, it's definitely important to, to look out for yourself a bit, and, uh, to, to know, I guess, most importantly, and th this is your, your big time, big time Tommy's, uh, life lesson of the day, uh, that, you know, the may, you may be the only one out there who is going through a certain thing. But you're definitely not the only one out there who's feeling the things you are feeling. So, I... I knew that I had to definitely, like, talk to the right person. And really get the right, right, you know, the very right person to get me going, Hey, you know, like... Not, not saying, hey, I'm silly for feeling the ways that I am. But for going, hey, like, you know, what, what are the things that you really, you know, you really, really love? And... I, yeah, I was just like, you know, the one thing that I definitely can always get interested in is you just put on, you put on some music and you have, you have, you know, you just soak it up. You just, you know, embody the music. Not embody the music, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds like if I listen to sad music or angry music, that's, that's, you know, not helpful. But like, uh, listening to music and like really feeling the emotion in the music. Um, and I guess it's just, yeah, like... Just finding that, like, that happy place? That sounds a bit, um, negative. I don't know how to really phrase it. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. I guess everyone's a bit different. Uh, for me, I just kind of was like, hey, like, if I focus on this music, I can ignore the past, I can ignore the future, and focus on the now. And what am I doing now? I'm sitting comfy in my house listening to music. And, you know, this music is predictable, it's music that I know, it's it's music that I I was really hoping as well, <laughs> just just know I was really hoping that that would evolve just straight there. Be like, yeah, make my day right now. Um, alas. I'm getting a bit of that cast, uh, passive experience, because I feel like it'll be kind of nice. Also, I'm too in the mood of Nino Kuni right now, where I'm like, yeah, no, I really should be grinding, because I'm gonna need it. Uh, whereas in Pokemon, actually, I don't know if I'm gonna need it right now. 
I I'm gonna be fighting, I'll tell you that. It's definitely gonna be a bit of a battle on this gym. And Babat's not gonna get any any money out of it whatsoever. Oh well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, no, I I definitely think um, you know in 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 these difficult times for some, and I think for like no, I think everyone's having it tough in some way. You know, ju just know that there are people out there who know how you're feeling and know exactly like you know what helps them in a way. So so if you ever feeling feeling stumped. Reach out. Uh, can be to me if you really want to. I'm not qualified for it, but, you know. You, you can send me a DM if you want. That's all fine. Uh, and just go, like, yeah, like, you know. Why why am I feeling upset? Because quite often, like, you know, I, I start thinking about, like, oh, no, I've done something wrong. Or I feel like someone's done me wrong. And I get into this vicious cycle of going, well, next time it won't be that way. And then, like... It's not helpful. It's not, it's not helpful to, like, start acting, uh, planning revenge and stuff, so... Having someone to bounce off, it's definitely helped. Um... And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... Other than that, other than that kind of serious topic, I guess, yeah, just... You know... When I start to feel down, it starts to, like... I, I wouldn't say take, like, a hugely serious toll, but, yeah, definitely... Get, getting sores in your mouth is just like, it's the worst, because it's like, that's where I eat, that's where I talk, that's where I drink, it's like, I want to drink water and it hurts my mouth, oof, so, yeah, it's definitely one, one thing where, you know, I gotta try to not get that upset, because uh, it stops me from doing these wonderful streams. Where I get to sail north and skip random trainers for- Oh, I'm just there! <laughs> uh. <laughs> this one's level 15. I'll do it for the meme. They got some really high tentacles this whole route, isn't it? They go between 15 and 24, don't they? And I had, like, upper 20s that whole time. It's crazy. Yeah. So anyway. Look after yourself, and be all the good. And with that, let's get right into the news of, of, uh, I guess, what is the topic of the now? It's been rather quiet times. Uh, there's definitely things going on in the world. I'm still a bit upset about Bitcoin coming back, uh, to some extent. Um, here's something. Should I talk about... Should I talk about a new topic, or should I kind of just go, well, I'm about to get my butt absolutely wiped in this gym. Because I feel like my butt's going to get absolutely wiped. Freaking, the two, the two Pokemon who can do something in this fight is Hot Doggo and No Arm Boy, my two underleveled team members. I'm curious whether I'm absolutely screwed because of how low level they are. My brain's thinking maybe. It's worth having a go. Uh, I gotta go up the lighthouse, yeah. Whoops. Alright, so. Uh, the game story. Now that I've gotten the medicine, and I've gotten, uh, all the way. Uh. Sorry. Now that I've gotten the medicine, I can go all the way up the lighthouse. If you hadn't gone up the lighthouse before, I guess you gotta fight all the trainers, but... If you're like me and you have, then... You've done it. It's okay. Uh... Does mean you guys... I guess you gotta walk up the lighthouse again, but... I feel like you do need the levels... To... To really fight, um... The gym... In Cyanwood, so... Oh, don't go... Oh, yes, go that way. It's such a cheeky, like, way to, like go up. But that is the route. So, you go up here. Hey, right, will that medicine cure Ampy? No! I see. <laughs> Hang on! <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you got half the secret potion. Uh, please don't be offended. Ampy will not take anything from anyone but me. Ampy, how you feeling? 
Wow! Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I'm so relieved. This is just so wonderful. Thank you so very, very much. I will return to the gym. I, she, she goes up that way, but like, where did she go? The easiest way down is to the right here, so... Oh, that's a, that's a bit of an angle, but... Sure, we'll go with it. Uh... But yeah, with that, uh, she returns to the gym, and at this point, uh, this is where I cry a little bit, because... Yeah, after one gym... Like, I guess you have to, you know... In order to get to Olivine City here, you do have to go through a route, and then you don't fight a gym, instead you continue on going. So you fought more trainers, it's just now I'm sitting in this like awfully underlevel camp, and there's no trainers. You just go straight in. So this is different. Please allow me to beat you up. My name is Jasmine, I use a steel type. Do you know about the steel type? It's a type that was only recently discovered. Uh, may I begin? So making point that, yeah, they didn't know what Steel Type was before this, which is awfully convenient because she has Magnemite. Now, this is the part where I'm going to cry a little bit because she's got two Magnemites, they both have the same moveset and they're also both level 30. Uh, they've got Thunderbolt, Supersonic, Sonic Boom, and Thunder Wave. Now, Sonic Boom is going to, uh, actually all of them are going to be a bit mean. I think Thunderbolt's probably going to be the meanest. I'm not going to be able to do this at all. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this at all, wow. The one thing I can, like, maybe- Oh my gosh, yeah, no, there's- Oh, no. Because, yeah, I was hoping of getting- Yeah, like, nothing's going to last. Like, they can use Thunderbolt. I can use Thunder Shock. Thunderbolt is a, is a remarkably good attack. But on top of that, like, they got Supersonic, which is just gonna, like, goof me up. And also Sonic Boom. And just in case, like, you know, you've got something that's actually that bulky, you can't do anything about it. I actually might be able to, <laughs> to cheese this one. Um, the other thing that I can maybe cheese is that, very, very fortunately, I have, uh, I have a Quagsire, who is water ground, and therefore, Thunderbolt will not hit him, which is great. Do I wing it? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna just, like, pull Fluffer out, go for the Thunder Wave. Because what Thunder Wave does is that if you, if you paralyze your opponent, they go half speed. And I think I'm gonna need that half speed. Well, we're not getting that half speed. So, uh, so that does mean... Yeah, like, I mean, Chicky... Oh, do I keep Chicky? Nah, we're gonna send no arm boy out. So, he can't hit me with a water type, sorry, with an electric type attack, but he can't get me with Sonic Boom or Super Sonic. I don't think Thunder Wave hits, because it is electric type, even if it is a non-damaging move. Now, I can use Surf, no problem, but that's not gonna, that's not gonna take him out, so... He's just gonna have to wing Supersonic and it's 55% accuracy. And he could use Sonic Boom, but I've got a fair bit of health. He's not gonna get, like, tons far. Um, if I get a crit or a... Okay, cool, okay. We're, we're a little bit ahead of the game here. So, now comes the pain. Jasmine has Steelix. The Steelix is... Level 35. It... The last gym went up to level 30 and that was it. Uh, no, there's no single trainer between here and there that goes between level 30 and 35. And on top of that, that gym leader is like well above like the, the levels of the wild Pokemon around him. This level 35 Steelix comes out of nowhere. Uh, so Steelix is Steel Ground. I looked it up and I said this at the end of the last part. I was worried about Steelix being fast. I actually looked it up. Steelix has a much lower base speed than Onyx. So that's where I was getting confused. Um, this Steelix, uh, I guess also Steelix is, uh, a, a physical wall. He's not as good on the special wall, which means I can cheese Surf a little bit. Now, he's got Sunny Day. No idea why. It, he doesn't have Solar Beam. 
What happened there? Maybe it, maybe it drops the power of my water attack. Alright, so. He's got Iron Tail, but... I think I can bulk it. Mm. Alright, so the other attacks he's got is Rock Throw and Screech. Now, if he was to spam Screech, I'd be stuffed. I'd be really stuffed. If I get a crit, I'm happy days, but... Uh, Amnesia's not gonna help me. Uh, neither is Tail Whip, nor is Slam, so I can really only spam Surf, but Surf is a great move, so I'm set on that front. Oh, is that Sunny Day actually do that? Oh, it totally does! It reduces the base power of water type moves by 50%. Oh! Oh, that's... That is pain, yeah. Oh. Do I have 50 health? I, mm, I can use the super potion. I wish I had more of the milk. Or really, any of the milk. That's okay. I got two super potions. I'm, I'm gonna just, like, stall a little bit. I think he's probably gonna spam Iron Tail just because it is his best attack. Oh, the sun's gone. Alright. Listen, if he's not, if, if if Jasmine's not gonna use another Hyper Potion, I'm set, because this Surf's gonna do a lot of damage, and... Like, he's just gonna spend a turn doing a Sunny Day, so... That's okay. Uh, my fallback as well is that I was gonna send out, um, Bayleaf. Because... At least I can use a Grass-type attack. Not super effective. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Grass-type, not super effective, because it's gonna go through the seal, but... At least I could try. Um... You know, I'm actually surprised that, like... That went as smoothly as it did. I think it's because she doesn't have a strat. She's got a strong Pokémon, but... The strat's not too bad. Like, she doesn't have a, a, a killer attack, it's just kind of like, his Steelix, it's overleveled. So... Oh! I was more concerned about that than I probably should have. Okay. Cool. So yeah, uh, you can get Iron Tail, which is a good attack, actually. Um, Iron Tail has a chance of reducing your defense, I believe, as well, so... I probably was a little lucky that that didn't happen in the middle of the fight. Uh, so you could fly back home. Uh, sorry, back to Ecruteek. Because you gotta, you gotta go the other way. But... You don't need it right now. I'm just gonna be walking back, it's fine. I got nothing. Pull out the bike, let's go. I really need just like a fly slave. Alright, if I see a Hutu, I'm getting it. I should have caught one like really early on just to be like, yep, there's my that's my HM, that's my fly. You know Hutu. Uh so anyway, rip hot doggo by the way, getting swept on like the first turn. Just a bit of a shame there, so... Anyways, let's jump into the topic of the week. So, uh, so I was having a bit of a combo about, um, I guess uh, the recent topic is, uh, the recent game of the now is, uh, Left for Blood. Left for Blood? Back for Blood. It's got a four on the name, it's Left for Dead. Like, three-ish. Um, I've not played it. I'm hearing... Uh, opposite sides of the spectrum on how it is, and as someone who hasn't played it, I can't really judge. But if there's one thing I can judge, that is, games that cost a lot of money for the end consumer. This game is a full $90 Australian game. That's a standard price for brand new games here, um, unless you buy them on the 3DS, in which case they were never that price, or if you buy them on the Switch, because often they go to, they start at 80, um, and that's a, that's a fun price point. Um, Actually, I'm gonna go catch a hoodoo just so I've got one, like, just sitting there. I don't know if I'm gonna get hoodoo out of here. Probably not. But, I, I know, if I go down and then right, I'm fine. Or even better, I'm an idiot. Like, I gotta go this way anyways. But I realize it's like, well, there's grass? There's no grass. Uh, there's something in the 
cave that I can use? Yeah, actually. Okay, we're good. Oh, I've, yeah, I remembered as well. Ooh. Alright, well, this is gonna be fun. Did you like how it didn't have to do the fade out transition and actually gone to the, the fight quicker? That's just fun. Um, so yeah, Back for Blood is a $90 Australian video game. Uh, it also... Woo! That was close. You may be wondering why I'm catching a Zubat. Well, I'm thinking, well, the Zubat can learn Flash, can't he? As well as Fly. I am pretty sure. bring up the HM compatibility, uh, chart. Uh, we're gonna call him Flashfly, because that's what he does. That's what he's gonna do. His existence is purely to Flashfly. Uh, I should have had the, the spare space, but that's okay. Um, I forgot how much, so Back for Blood has a, uh, a deluxe edition that contains the season pass that they're including, but it's also got an ultimate edition. And, and I, I get my head wrapped around the, you know, what's a... What's an ultimate condition? What's a deluxe edition? I think the ultimate edition has, like, extra cosmetics. Um... Zubat does not learn Flash. <laughs> Zubat does not learn Flash. Where is Zuban the Sable? Where is Zuban the Sable? Where is he? Hold on, hold on, did I just get this completely wrong? I did get it completely wrong. Crobat can learn Fly. Only Crobat, I have forgotten. That's also the reason why I haven't been using Fly. I've double forgotten that. Okay, so if I need something to use Fly, let's just rule this out, first of all. Let's just, I can see Hutu, Hutu can learn Flash and Fly. Uh... It's going. He's out of there. See ya, Flashfly. <laughs> you know, you're not staying in here. I don't want you. Poor Flashfly. Um. Uh. I yeah. I didn't see the price of the middle one. If, if I had to guess off the top of my head, I'd say one hundred twenty dollars. It's a red apricorn. Wow. Uh. But yeah, the ultimate edition was one hundred and fifty Australian dollars. Uh. I remember someone saying it was. Red Apricorn! I remember someone saying uh, Back for Blood was $170? Uh, Australian? It's it's not, it's $150. It's, I've seen $170. Uh, I can't remember which game did $170 as their, like, the season pass, but like, I mean, to me, $170 is a lot of money, man. The worst part as well is that you know the game is just going to go on sales. It's, it's going to go, like, way cheaper than that. I can be patient. I don't need to spend $170. And, and by extension, I also don't feel the need to really pay $90 for a game. That's just me. I know. I'm not most people. But, uh, it's definitely something that I feel is like, man, a lot of these games are kind of expensive. And bonus points for Back to Blood. What are you doing here? I wasn't looking for you! What are you- <laughs> What's my strat? What's, what do I do? Just use bite? Use bite? I don't know. You're gonna run away immediately. That's that's what Suicune does. Alright, for reference. <laughs> Suicune, uh, Entei and Raikou, they're roaming around the place. They're gonna randomly appear when I, when I do a wild encounter. They're all level 40. If I can find them and catch them, cool. Uh, they will immediately run away on the turn. It's like, the only thing you can have is, like, you've got to be faster and use, like, Mean Look or something on them. And though they won't run away there. Am I actually fighting in the right area as well? I don't know if I'm in the right, like... No, no, no. Who should appear here? This is Route, uh, 31, isn't it? Yeah. I'm in the, the right 
spot, aren't I? I mean, granted, I did just see Suicune, so I, I got no idea. I also, I don't know the rate off the top of my head of, like, when you see Suicune, as opposed to... Anyone else? Uh, it is a 10% chance of finding Hooted, so it's not a it's not a great chance. Maybe I should go going, like, one route more. Yeah, my odds are better if I go one, one route before. But if I find a Hooted right here, then cool. Oh, that would've been cool if I caught this weekend, so... Uh, so anyway, so, yeah, on top of that, Back for Blood has, uh, a... I'm not going to call it pay to win, because I haven't played the game, I got no idea. But, uh, people do say it's, it is paying for a mechanical shortcut, which is that you'd have to work your way within game currency to, to get a... the... I don't know, just cards? I don't know what they necessarily are in-game. Um... It is a cooperative game, I guess you could say the thing that it's really only to shortcut and nothing more than that, but... Uh, still, it, it's it's a game that is full price that... You know, it asks for you to pay two-thirds of its price again for uh, uh, cosmetics and extra content. And then it also asks you to pay money to not play the game as much as they are going to make you play the game. Um, and to that I go, well, there's like a lot of things, I feel like this is a topic that I've spoken about a fair bit, but, um, uh, it makes me think, like, okay, so, I've always had the feeling, and I can rather guarantee this, is that a lot of game devs just cut back on the content and ideas, refine it, granted, like, it's not like they don't end up with a quality product, but they've realized that they can tack on extra content rather than including it as part of the main game such that they can deliver a more consistent, singular product that is easier to design and develop and produce. You see, you see where I'm going? It's like, if you know that you're going to make DLC, it makes creating a core experience really easy because you know that you're, you know, you're going for it. Um, the fact that, like, they're talking about, like, that next content, but, like, again, I don't know what I'm buying. If you're going to sell me DLC, please be upfront about it. I absolutely hate when it's, you know, like, and, and I don't know, this is whole, like, preaching to the choir, maybe. But it's like, I absolutely hate when it's like, oh, like, you know, we're gonna have four new characters. And I'm like, who's the new characters? What do they do? Why should I care? Like, like, I... I'm paying for extra content at a disproportionate price to the main game. It's always disproportionate to the main game, but it's even more so when you see countless examples of games that are cheaper in, like, as standalone products than they are with DLC. I remember buying Wolfenstein 2 for eight and a half dollars, and the DLC has not dropped below collectively seventeen dollars. It's it's just like that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, what do you what do you do? Um. So anyway, now I can get Fly, and let's use it. Teach Fly to Flash Fly. Flash Fly, learn Fly. Cool. And you can also learn Flash. Now, Hutu can't learn any other t uh, HMs, so there may be better Pokemon out there. I always rely on um, PokemonDB.net, always has a great table where for each game they have the Pokedex of the game, and then a column for each of the HMs in the game. Uh, and then you can filter by which HMs that you would like. So if I, like, yeah, if I click Flash and Fly, it gives me a list of, uh, seven Pokémon in the game, three of which are legendaries, and the other four are either Hootoot, Noctowl, Togetic, and Zatu, and both of them only will learn Fly and Flash in HMs. So, uh, you end up not really gaining anything too out of it. Um, the other thing as well is that, like, yeah, I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, like... So, one Pokemon can learn all of them, that's Mew, that's just how Mew works. Um... And then there's... Lugia, Dragonite, Golduck? Surprisingly, he can't learn Cut and Fly, but he can learn the rest as well as Psyduck. Uh, Squeak... Oh, those can learn five. There's a few that learn four. Um, it's mostly the water ones, because there's three water HMs. So, there's a lot of overlap in those ones. Um... 
there's, yeah, there's quite a few fours. Uh, Quagsire is one of those fours as well, which is actually quite neat. So if I really want to, he could be stre Surf Strength Flash Whirlpool. Um, he could. I don't know if I would teach Flash on a, on a Pokemon I would want to use, but that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, it's a good table. I always recommend that one. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't... I don't particularly like the idea of, like, the game costing, well, rather the DLC costing that much, and then the game is a sub-experience because of that. Um, and I guess it's a, it's a tricky one to explain like that, but yeah, like, I feel like, well, games in the past didn't have this, like, level of, you know, stuff happening. I, I don't remember, you know, like, three different forms of DLC. I didn't, I didn't know that you had to buy a game, then you had to buy the content that added on to the game, and then you had to buy the, um... You'd have to buy the progression through the game if you really wanted to. I mean, I know you can grind, but... There, there have been worse cases where... Where it's just, you know, it's just not... It, the game is just like, you know horrendously, uh, slow, slow paced, they just demand too much playing out of you in order to really get the content. Um, I'm gonna switch over as well, I know Hot Doggo really needs levels. But it's a cave. Except I'm slow. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run away from things. Anyway, uh, I might as well mention Mount Mortar here, uh, features an even, uh, I, I guess, um, Pokemon list between gold and silver. You got a 60% chance of finding a Zubat, 20% uh, chance of finding Machop, 14% chance of Rotata, 5% chance of Geodude, and 1% chance of Meryl. Uh, the Pokemon here don't go beyond level 16 because you can go in here the moment you visit the fourth city. So it's actually planned for, you know, as if you could go to the fourth city. Um, there's nothing really too in the way. I think you do need Surf to continue on here. So, but because you only get fly from the 5th gym, technically you're not restricted in coming here after you beat the 4th gym. I think you do- oh. Yeah, no. When do you get strength? I've completely forgotten. Also, is this the exit right here? It is. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe there's any trainers in there either. There's definitely a lot of items in there, uh, so I know that you can go to another cave part where there's just more Pokemon. In fact, I don't think there's anything too weird, but there's apparently an upper cave around with level 30 Pokemon. I don't know what you're required in order to get into the upper cave. Um, there's bound to be more stuff in there. Hey! This is my secret place! Get lost! I should really spend the time actually, like, going about in there. Anyway, this guy's got a net arena. But again, like, you can... You can technically come over here, uh, immediately after getting... I didn't even need surf. I guess I could have just gone in here immediately, so... Oh, oh, and bonus points for you can just surf across the water without even needing to go into the cave if you do have surf, so... Bonus points for that. Isn't that fun as well? It's all optional. The mid arena's cool though. I like it. Uh, yeah, I... Like... There's not really much more I can say about pricing things other than... Things weren't priced that way in the past. And I know it's like, yeah, games are... Like... I know, games get more and more expensive to make. Did Back for Blood really costs that much more to make than both Left 4 Deads. Because this is the other thing as well, Back 4 Blood is in an unfortunate spot where it has to be compared to Left 4 Dead, because that's what they made before, and... I just used Amnesia, and... Valve charges, in Australia, $14.5 for either Left 4 Dead, or $21, $21.75, I think, for both, when it's not on sale. You, you can buy both Left 4 Deads for a quarter of the price that you would back for Blood. And 
you're competing with an established player base, rather extensive modding community, uh, and the fact that a lot of people probably own Left 4 Dead already, and also the fact that you know it's a good game. RIP you got Magnitude 4! Just, oh, horrendous low number on that one. Um, and I guess that's, yeah, that's that's a tough sell. And I, I find that's a thing with all video games, and that's why maybe you're not seeing sales for games that go as hard as they used to, because it's, like, you used to be, you know, sell new games really easily, but now I feel like, you know, with games costing more and more to make, and they really do demand more content out of it, they can't afford to make their games as absurdly cheap unless a certain large company was spending upwards of a billion dollars on people just to put their games for free on their platform, which... It's happened, you know. Um... So... It's a... yeah, it's a tough situation. Uh, so I guess in the- oh! Joey! Joey! Wanna battle? It's not gonna be a repeat of the last time we met. I'll be around row 30. You know what's the worst part? I totally can fight him. Because I can fly. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna wreck Joey. Uh, I'm gonna visit the- I don't know if you can visit a town- you can fly to a town after- I guess you can. Okay. I guess I'm in the town. So this is Mahogany Town. We'll visit it in a moment, but I'm actually gonna, uh, one, wreck Joey. This is highly important. Fate has given me a, an opportunity to wreck Joey. I'm not gonna skip it. So, I don't know. Oh, I, I, don't have, I don't have much to say about pricing. It's just, like... No, it gets a bit tiring, I guess. Just like seeing games get this pricey and be like, well, I mean, I'm at least sitting comfy, you know, with my horrendously large Steam library. It's really big. I'm getting there. So. And what a wonderful segue to. Well, let's see what Youngster Joey's got, first of all. Hey, he's got his Raticate. It's level 21! He's done okay. Good on you, Joey. And he's got Quick Attack. Joey, Joey's trying to move up in the world. Trying. So, anyway, that's a segue to what have I been playing this week. And uh, to that, I have been playing more of Nino Kuni. Um, I'm getting a bit worried. I'm actually near the end of the game. Uh, but I'm only 26 hours in. And I don't know. Uh, Trying to go spoiler free just because I know people haven't played. Well, some people may not have played the game. Uh, I'm getting three stones. I got one of them. I'm only 26 hours into the game. I, like, I'm under this impression that there's not much left of the world to explore or, like, mysteries to uncover. Maybe there are mysteries, but. Uh, it's bit weird for me because yeah there's not much it doesn't feel like there's much left to do there's only so many quests in the game and you can judge the number of quests based on the number that like the quest number that the first uh um bounty task has uh i've done i guess i've got like 30 left uh oh do i have I, do i have cut on me i don't have a cut on me So yeah, you got this, like, halfway point, which is, I guess, interesting. Who can learn cut? I'm really curious who actually, because I, ne I need someone consistently who can use cut. So, I guess, I guess here's the thing. First of all, let's just, like, double check my move list. I'm pretty sure I gave, um, no -on boy I am totally going to give no -on boy 4 HMs, aren't I? We've got slam. Would I prefer Strength and Slam? I haven't taught anyone Strength, have I? Or maybe I taught Onyx Strength. And Rock Smash. That makes sense. Uh, so with Cut... Uh... I'm trying to think, who would be the best one to teach Cut? I'd probably want to Cut and Strength Pokemon, wouldn't I? Maybe. Uh... Yeah, 
Yeah. That was the worst part. There's a there's a couple of like really good options and just like nothing that I can actually like go for right now. Well, maybe there's this one. Maybe there is this one. Maybe there is one. Can I go for it? Is he available? Uh. Yes, actually, I might be able to go from. All right, cool. Cool. All right. I need something that I can do cut and strength, and this is my option, and I guess I should also look up whether he can win Rock Smash while I'm at it, but let's go and catch him. Let's go and get him. Uh, so my brain's thinking I should go down here to Iggy Azalea Town, uh, where, if I look this up, I'm pretty sure he learns Rock Smash, doesn't he? He does, yes! Yeah, okay. Because, yeah, so... I guess, yeah, you gotta deal with Rock Smash, and then... Cut Fly. Alright, so we're... I'm gonna try and get, a uh, Sanctuary here. Uh, I don't know how good the odds are, but... I'll have a go. I'm trying to get him. Isn't this convenient, because I'm playing gold, so rip you playing silver, if you are playing silver. Uh, Sancho is... 30% chance. Oh, there he is. Cool. Also, 0% chance in crystal at night time, so that's awfully convenient, isn't it? Uh... Do I just wake him? I'll just catch him. Easy. So, yeah, because he can learn... He can learn cut, he can learn strength, and he can learn rock smash, and that's all I need. I need to get another TM of Rock Smash, but sure. So that's cool. Um, other than that, I am enjoying Nino Kuni. The atmosphere is nice. There was a good section uh, in, in the town of Hamelin. I thought that was a great, like, chapter of the game. Uh, I'm surprised that they haven't kept... Um, cut and... Rock. I guess because he's learning both of the rock ones. Um, I just, just not, so yeah. So there's Cut, Fly, uh, there's Strength, uh, Flash, and then the other three, the three water ones. So Surf, Waterfall, and, um, Whirlpool. I feel like Whirlpool is so contextual, but, yeah, we'll see. I guess I could get really any water type to just, like, fill in the remaining moves as well for that one. Uh, that would mean that I'd actually have to put someone away, uh, if I was maintaining both of these guys, so I'm actually gonna do that just to, just to go, hey, like, let's balance this out. I think I know the perfect person to put away. Uh, I'm gonna put in, put away Fluffer for the moment. I think Fluffer's gonna get a little caught out, uh, and I can always bring back Fluffer a bit later. So, Cut and Rock. Let's teach him the moves. Oh wait, he's not cutting. He's, he's uh, wait. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, he's cut. Yeah. It's, it's flying flash on the other one. Yeah, flash fly. Cut and rock. Alright, and then he also learns strength, and then I gotta buy another rock smash. I don't have another Rock Smash in there. Cool. That'll be good. That'll let me at least tackle on some things for the moment. And before I've got Whirlpool and... Uh, Whirlpool and uh, Waterfall, that's fine. So let's head to Goldenrod. Gotta get on the bike just to go this way. Gotta take the lift. Do you even know, like, what's on what floor? It's always 3F three, three every time. Uh, yeah, no, Nino Kuni is, is, it's a good time. I didn't pick it up for that much. I only paid, like, I think, like, 13, 14 bucks? So, yeah, like, I'm getting my money's worth. It's fine. And honestly, like, as a PC game, yeah, it runs well. So, there's that. Um, <laughs> I, I know that sounds like a bit of a weird comment, but it's like, yeah, there's, there's a surprising number of games where it's just, like, 
they're not very well running PC games. And so it's like, I, I guess I am playing it, but, you know, is it really good? Uh, TMOA, right? I'm pretty sure it's TMOA, isn't it? Yeah, that's Rock Smash, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty alright. Uh, other game I'm spending my time on is uh, I have started playing... Um, I'm, I'm getting to this awkward part of uh, F1 2019 I'm playing, where yeah, one of the achievements involves maximizing your sportsmanship rating, and another achievement involves maximizing your showmanship rating. And they're polar opposites, and you start the game right in the middle, and it's just really easy to just play the game twice. But now I have to play the game twice. It's kind of annoying, so I'm currently just doing a save where, like, I do one, you know, practice event, one shot quality, and then a five lap race, and that seems to get me into the most number of interviews. I tried skipping races or like just entering and then retiring, and I would constantly get uh, interviewed about how my team is falling behind, um, and it, like I just like bag on a freaking like department, and I'm like, oh okay. <sighs> like this one thing that I guess like you know require multiple playthroughs, but it's like, this is, this is a sports game, I'm doing the same thing over and over again, and literally all that changes is what, like, you know, options I pick in this one menu. Alright, so let's, let's explore this cave a bit. Alright, flash and fly. Let's see what's going on. I'm pretty sure you may need waterfall, but I'm certain you can at least, like, explore a fair bit of this place just like with you know with a cut and fly this also as well do I wing hot doggo out I'm gonna do it just because I mean hot dog is fast and I but there's no trainers there's only one trainer later on I'm also curious if I'm actually going to get wrecked by that one. Probably. Yeah, I'm probably going to get wrecked. Okay. Actually, can I even do this? It's telling me to, to go up the waterfall. I'm like, that's not at this point of the game, is it? I'm, I'm, I'm misremembering this poorly. This is, this is the traditional blender. Where he looks things up on Bulbapedia to keep himself in line. And then he proceeds to get so lost in the reasoning that he doesn't know what's going on. I'm pretty sure you can explore a lot of this cave, but... You need... You need waterfall, don't you? By the end of it? Like, you get thrown out into this, uh, upper part of the cave. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alright. My bad. So... Alright, the upper part of the cave is really obvious. The lower part of the cave... ...is... ...kinda obvious, but it's full of just... ...navigating around. And it's probably just gonna give a bunch of items, but, you know, I'll take a bunch of items. Oh, will I take a bunch of items that take forever to, to get? Oh, we'll see. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's a racing game. Uh, speaking of racing game, I have started playing uh, on the side Forza Motorsport 7. And I have played Horizon 3, Horizon 4, and Motorsport 1. And I absolutely did not enjoy Motorsport 1 for the few hours I did play of it. Um... And I know that's probably sacrilege for a lot of people, but I don't know, it just, it felt too heavy. I didn't like the music loops playing constantly, and I know you could put your own CD music on there, but I don't have a CD burner. Uh, so, I've got a handful of CDs, but it, it's so much effort to put them onto the Xbox, like, because you got to name them. It doesn't scrape any metadata off the CD, um, which is <laughs> fairly disappointing, but... Uh, but yeah, no, playing Motorsport 7, I was like, hey, I'm actually kind of impressed. It's, it's still heavy in feel, 
but there's a lot of assists that like you know balance it out a little bit which i think is actually all right you got your rewind so like while you're trying to figure out the you know how the game works it's all right in that regard i think it's got a good number of tracks um some fictional ones that i still recognize from the first game that's cool uh and a lot of real world tracks and a good variety of real world tracks um as well as some variations in circuit layouts that's always nice being able to do Monza or Circumvert de la Sarve without the um, chicanes of them is always fun. Like, even if it's... I don't know anyone who ever does drive without the, the chicanes, but it's good fun. Um, the car roster is pretty good from what I've played so far, and I actually... I'm really enjoying um, having... Uh, having the, uh, the car roster be very, like class driven um and not just, <laughs> not like you know cars being cheap cars being expensive but like you know that there, there's trucks there's formula cars there's uh hatchbacks there's rally cars there's i mean there's no rallying in the game but there's a good variety of like different kinds of cars and just when you do an event uh when you do one of the the tournaments in the in the game it's always based around that kind of class of car. I don't think I can go any more up here, actually, so... You know, that kind of is it for the cave, I think. Yeah, I think that actually is it. I think there may be more, but there's definitely a lot more past a waterfall. I really need to use strength for like one hot second. Just to continue on here. But, yeah, okay. Oh, gosh. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely enjoyed it on that one. I also actually, I do enjoy the ability to customize the ranked the race length a little bit um and i know like there's a degree of like oh if you play like project cars it's just it's a little bit of a test of endurance um i've also found games like a uh, grid auto sport it's like yeah you can increase the length of the races but it's it's a bit of a drain i felt forza's doing a pretty good job on the long races on the extra long it feels forever but on long races the pace pretty okay that i'm not finding it a concern uh i also just like that there is a bonus uh, credits reward um, for doing the longer races. So you're not just, you know, you're not just doing a long race for the sake of it. You're doing a long race because you get more rewards out of it. And I might as well not just beat this, you know, beat all the campaign races and not have anything. I love how this guy just tells you to bugger off and head out the Lake of Rage. Um, so yeah, I guess we're going, we're going there. So this is Mahogany Town. There's a couple of things to note. Uh, we've got the while visiting Mahogany Town, try a Rage Candy Bar, and if you go too far in this direction, this guy goes, oh! Hi, sunny boy, I see you're new in Mahogany Town. Since you're new, you should try a yummy Rage Candy Bar. Right now, it could be yours for just $300. Might as well buy one. He doesn't let you continue, he just tries to sell you Rage Candy Bars all the time. Uh, I've forgotten what the Rage Candy Bar does, and I'm, again, I'm looking this up, and uh, I gotta close some tabs as well. Uh, it's potion. It's 20 HP. That seems really not worth it, but sure. Potions are cheaper than that, aren't they? This guy now. I heard that a red Gyarados appeared at the lake. That's odd, since even ordinary Gyarados are rare in that lake. That's a that's a fun sight. My favorite radio program? I'd say Pokemon Music. Oh, anyway, that's it. Oh, oh, and also, a uh, very weird house here. I forgot to mention. It's got music. Welcome, how may I help you? And you can buy weird items from here, like Pokeballs? The Slowpoke Tails again? Which are not worth that price. Just, um, it's just fun. The experiment works like a charm. Magic up, but just worthless. But now Gyarados are big money makers. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, so you gotta go sightseeing. You gotta go north here. Other than that, we got... I know, right? A route where we can just fight people. 
And with that, we get a bit of a patient time to fight people. Again, since you can come up here immediately after... I don't even think immediately after. Since you can come up here very soon, the Pokemon are not particularly high level. Uh, which means... I'm gonna have a good time fighting them, but I also am gonna, you know... Let's get Hot Doggo going up a bit in levels, because he is gonna need it. Let's clean some of these tabs while I'm going through some of this stuff. It's about to use Sand Slash? Whoa! You can't use that, it's illegal. Oh my gosh, really? Alright. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm actually enjoying Forza Motorsport 7. It's going to be a shame because they've, they're have they going to take it down from uh, sale in uh, a month's time and you can't buy it and there will not be a Forza Motorsport to cover it. And I think that's a bit upsetting because I'm really enjoying this game. I'm definitely thinking it's a good purchase. I, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, I feel like, yeah, this this title is offering something that the Horizon games have just not offered me. Um, and it's, it's, it's a bit hard to come by. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite Gran Turismo, it's still, you know, nothing ever comes as close to how I remember Gran Turismo. I don't know how the PS3 ones work. Um, isn't that weird? I think the first Forza Motorsport came out either very slightly before or slightly after uh, Gran Turismo 4, which is the last Gran Turismo I have played. I played HD Concept, I have played that, but does that, does that count? I don't know. But, yeah, like, you know, games come closer and closer to Todd, my man, my man Todd, how are you Pokemon doing my side? That's really energetic, it's a handful, yeah, I managed to beat a tough drowsy, I need to make my party stronger, see you later. Okay, cool. Hold it there, mister. The toll is a thousand dollars to go through. Thank you, sir. This freaking steals your money. I think there's actually... You could go left, I think, if you go through the grass. Yeah. I got... I got... I got stuck in. I, I lost my money. Can't believe it. I actually did get stuck in. Darn. Oh well, so, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Uh, the only other game that I'm going through is I'm making some additional progress on Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the trilogy that's on Steam. I'm making my way, I'm in uh, chapter 4 of the first game. So I thought I about to get wrecked. It probably is. So let's switch out to... Chicky! The Chicky will be good, because Chicky's going to get a little bit outclassed. Uh, for a few gyms now. That's a bit unfortunate that, like, Chicky is just like, you know, he gets... Chicky gets wrecked in the flying gym. The bug gym isn't particularly great. The ghost gym is just, you know, they're all ghost poison, so it's a bit uh, there. The steel type, you're not on the strong side. And then the two remaining gym types are ice and dragon. Ice is gonna wreck Chicky. Dragon is just not, not in Chicky's favor. The grass type just gets shafted this whole game. It's very, very mean. Brent. Oh, my poor Pokemon darlings. So. Are you going to Lake of Rage too? Let's play for a little while. Ooh. But yeah, I, you can't say more about Ace Attorney other than I'm, like, I'm definitely enjoying where it's going. I also, I am really appreciating the dialogue changing uh, between, oh boy, uh, between, like, days and a chapter, like, very slightly, depending on, like, the situation, and also uh, changing between the chapters in some cases, just, like, giving some extra info, and I'm like, you know, that's, that's good fun. 
sorry, not just info, but like just flavor text. Like, there's a lot of like fun stuff. I love minimize by the way because it keeps that effect like on screen, even if it literally is just, you know, they've got in increased evasion. Like that's it. It it doesn't mean anything that they're small like that. It's just <laughs> they've kept the animation. I don't know why. It's good fun. The fanny. I played too much. Yeah. Uh, mm, what? Uh, I should probably comment on the Pokemon that you can find here. There's a 30% chance of a giraffe rig. Uh, in morning, day, and night, it's a 30, 40, and 30% chance to find Flappy. 25, 20, and 0% for Pidgeotto. There's Flappy. Uh, 10, 10, and 5% for Mareep, and then 5, 0, and 15% for Venonat, and 0, 0, 20% for Noctowl. So the rates are a bit weird depending on your time of day, but uh, it's between those six, uh, and we've seen a few. Maybe not all of them, but definitely a few. Seeing Flaffy is kind of interesting as well. Do I commit with Poliwag? Because I know I can just get a Poliwag right now. Just get him as like, you know, hey, I've got something I can learn Whirlpool when I need it. Maybe. I feel like I might. I should. I don't know, I think that's... That's it for games I've been playing. It's been two weeks, it's been uh, a fair bit of time. Uh, but... It's a bit of, bit of respite, bit of, bit of getting, getting back into things. Um, I think it's been the, the big thing of my weeks, uh, or of my two weeks. Uh, and listen to the music. I've not listened to really that much new. Uh, I'm probably going to peep someone off when I say I listened to, um, what was it, Olivia Rodrigo's new album, and I was like, this is, now that's definitely music. You know, like... It's an album, but uh, I couldn't tell that it came out. Whoa! For reference, you gotta hit A when the the shaking. That's what I did. Oh, that's Polywag. Just to double check uh, as well. Oh, there's Polywag in his list. Well, he's not a cutter, I'll tell you that. But he's a surfer, isn't he? Yeah, he's a surf. Uh, Local and waterfall. Yeah, easy. So if I catch him, then that's all my HM's done. Uh, I'm probably gonna switch it up to uh, Chicky just so that while I'm trying to catch him, he doesn't absolutely ruin my day. Well, he's gonna absolutely ruin my day anyways, but... Let's just get him. Shouldn't be too bad. Uh... Yeah, I... I can't remember much about that album, and I listened to it last... Wednesday. Wow! Okay. Okay. Because it is an Epta walking on its newly grown legs, it always swims around in water. That's cool. Uh... We're gonna call him... We'll call him Surfer Bro. Because he surfs. That's what he does. Oh, okay. I was expecting that to take a bit longer, but sure. I'll commit to it. Now, don't worry, there's gonna be a bit of, bit of heat before the next gym, but I'm curious how, how many trainers I'm gonna have to fight before I get there. There's a bit of that. That's cool. Fellas up I love Pokemon! That's why I started that. Oh. oh my gosh. Jeez. Uh yeah, I it's it wasn't my cup of tea. Um and it's a bit of a weird one for me because the first song just sounded like it was so remarkably different to the rest of the album. Like it was punchy, it had this kind of like uh teen uh almost punk vibe, and then the rest was like this very by-the-books pop. Like, 
very as I'd expect. Um, and so that was a bit of a toughie for me um, to really get my head around. Uh, and yeah, I, I just can't remember much of it. I'm sorry. It's, it's... I feel like that's, you know, a fate worse than death, is not remembering a pop song of nowadays, but... You know, it's 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 not my cup of music because it's it just doesn't it doesn't ring to me as much. Um, I think another album that was kind of like that was um, uh, I'm remembering Future Nostalgia, uh, which was that like this time last year or was that like earlier this year? I think it was earlier this year. This year's going by either too quick or too slow. I can't tell anymore. Um, <laughs> But, like, that was one where it's like, no, it had to be been last year, because it won a Grammy, didn't it? I don't know. Uh, that's got, like, it's, I mean, granted, that album's got a couple of songs that I do remember. I do remember Levitating. I do remember, um, the title track, Future Nostalgia. I also remember, uh, Let's Get Physical? Is that the song? Um, and, and, of course, uh... I forgot the name of the song, but it, it, it's, it's been the TikTok song for a long time. It's the second track off the album. I have forgotten what it's called. Um, some Neville guy made fun of my Pokemon. My Pokemon's great! That's, that's kind of good fun that he shows up in that. Ron. I mean, I make fun of a guy called Ron. And he's got Nido King? It's level 19, I guess I... Maybe makes sense, but like, level 19, bro. Granted, I guess Nitto King is kind of, kind of killer. Well, not not with that damage. What happened there? Nothing, bro. Uh, but I did listen to another pop sensation song or album, and this one's a bit of an older one. This one is uh, Paul McCartney's Chaos and Creation in the Backyard which is from 2005, I believe. It was pretty good. I did like it. It's very consistent, and it's got a lot of that, like, wonderfully moody, mid-2000s kind of chord progression stuff going on, where, like, you know, they didn't play the songs, like, as straight as you probably could. They definitely go around to a lot of fun places. Um, it's very, very remarkably Paul McCartney, which I think is probably for the best. I think people complain about his albums getting a bit too... Uh, Fillery. Like, he'll, he'll come up with some really good ideas and then just fill in an album. Apparently that was his trend for a long time. Uh, this had the Radiohead producer guy, um, whose name, uh, has kind of escaped me, I'm sorry. Um, he did, he did the production on this one, he basically said, yo, keep it together, bro. And he did, apparently, and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a little bit of a, I feel a bit of Radiohead near the end of the album. Um, like the, the little bonus track at the end, but I mean, honestly, it honestly was, yeah, a pretty good album. There's a bunch of, like, good melodies and, uh, just generally catchy, catchy songs, so I'll definitely need to give it a couple more listens, but, um, i definitely say it's quite good. Uh, is it, like, my absolute, like, peak album of its year? That's a toughie for me. I haven't listened to too many 2005 albums, uh, I do prefer Dead Wing by Porcupine Tree, and I know that there's some couple other ones. Um, I'm gonna look this one up as well while I'm at it. Critical hit! Yeah, rip that. I'm pretty sure I listened to another one that's on, like, Great Music's 2005 list that's not that one. I've listened to Demon Days, I'll tell you that. We'll put Demon Days up there. Uh, Francis the Mute, that's my personal favorite. There we go. Francis the Mute is like, whoa, it's a great album. Oh, I'm getting thrashed. There's also a couple of video game soundtracks that I've definitely, like, listened to the music in it, but not as the, you know, as an album soundtrack. Uh, yeah, nah, that's that, um, but I, I, I feel like I've definitely been being, blah, uh, psh, strong out on that one. Uh, I've been spending a bit of time just kind of, you know, re-listening re and re-kind of learning my own music and kind of gaining bits about it. Um, I'm still, I'm still on an absolute binge of, uh, 
Bruno Panavis, uh, his, his stuff. Just remarkably, like, refreshing new music for me. And it's, it feels very vintage. It's very, like, it's an era of time that I was never really a part of. I don't have space for the full restore? Bro, I don't, I don't need this, like, Puzkur. Which one do I not need? Awakening would be good. Ah, oh, this is Ditchy Apricorn. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I've thrown away... You gotta, you gotta have a full restore, though. Well, that's convenient. I've come around here with someone who can cut. Thank you, Cut and Rock. Oh, gosh. This is the worst part of the whole game. This, this, this cut maze right here. Because they know exactly what you're feeling right now. And that's dread for these trees. There's a max ether in there, that's cool. Uh, it's good stuff, so... I don't know, I'm, I'm curious, uh, I guess, I, I've spoken about how music is really kind of meaning something to me. Uh, this is TM43, which is Detect. That's the move that lets you cheap out and completely ignore the next attack that your opponent's, like, about to dish you. Uh, also, here's a guy, and you're like, oh, you straight far. Let me share my power! And he gives you TM-10. This is Hidden Power. Uh, this is the fun move where you teach it and it's got a random power, uh, like, you know, move power and a random type. And it just depends on some hidden stats that your Pokemon has under the hood. So every Pokemon does have a hidden power type somewhere. Nothing in this game tells you what it is unless you teach them that move and then try and deduce what type it is by using the move on other people. Uh, sometimes it's amazing because then it means that you can effectively teach, you know, an electric type and ice type attack, which is always a great, like, counter to have. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, hidden powers not in 8th gen, and that disappoints some people. And there's a rare candy here. One day I'll actually use my rare candies. I just love this, like, whole, like, corner area because it's, it's just, it's just lying here. There's not really any huge reason why it's over here, and it's not like you do need to go over here. It's just for a bunch of TMs, but that's cool. Yeah, I, I, I've definitely spoken about just, yeah, how, how music kind of really, uh, really gets me and gets me, uh, you know, out of bad situations, into good situations, it's always good. That's uh, a really powerful thing for me. Um, and it may not necessarily be music, I guess, but, uh, for, for others. But I feel like, yeah, there's probably, like, things that people, you know, can do and are really passionate and, and that can just, you know, like, it, it just kind of wows me that, like, you know, something so, uh, seemingly benign can have that impact on people. But I guess there's, there's definitely... You know, just, just the way uh, it goes, so... Anyway, anyway, we're up here. Did my eyes see me? I saw a red Gyarados in the lake. But I thought Gyarados were usually blue. Uh, you can go in here. Fishing Guru's house. You can, you can go in there. And this guy's all like, yo. Lake of Rage is usually... <laughs> got rampaging Gyarados. Created fill up with water and lake was formed. That's the story part from my grandpa. It's great, great grandpa. It used to be that you could catch lively magic up there, but... I don't understand what's happening. So, anyway, you can see, he's right there. Uh, I can guarantee if I don't send Chicky out, Hot Doggo is going to get wrecked. Uh, I'm also going to save, uh, just because I do want this as a bit of a memorabilia thing. So, you do have to get rid of this red Gyarados in the middle of the lake. What you don't have to do is kill him. I, or have him face you. So, yeah, there's a, there's a Gyarados here, and he is actually red. Now, this is the game's legit introduction to shiny Pokemon, but, of course, at any point in this game, there could have been a chance where you just come up with... Oh! 
Dragon Rage does a flat 40 damage. <laughs> That's a bit mean. Alright, we'll go with the no one, boy. That's okay. How am I faster than him? I don't understand how no one, boy, is as fast as he is. Well, he can use Lyra all he wants. Dragon Rage isn't going to do any more damage. Unless he uses just anything else. Uh, but yeah, no, so... Uh, the, the way that shinies work in this game is that every single Pokemon has an alternate shiny color palette. There's nothing really mechanically different about them, but you will definitely get all the cool kids in school looking over your shoulder going, holy crap, your Pokemon's red. Uh, it's not necessarily red as well. It's like, you know, uh, I think the classic example is uh, Mew turns green. Um, and yeah, we were talking about it in, in comments and the chat on this one. Uh, I am woefully unlucky when it comes to getting shinies. The last shiny that I had ever seen was during my botched Let's Play of this game before. Not botched. I didn't really continue it. It wasn't really botched. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was a shiny Pidgey, and I critted it early, and then, yeah, I couldn't catch it. Uh, I don't think I really would have used the Pidgey on my team, but it's a little disappointing that the Pidgey was definitely no more because of my actions. Um, this is not looking good for catching this guy. It is still just a regular Pokemon. It's not uh, any harder to catch. Like, it being, yeah, it being shiny means absolutely nothing on a mechanical basis. So don't, don't think of it as like, oh, this Pokemon is better than any others. But that being said, this is the only shiny that is ever like, fixed. That's, like, there. It's the only one in any Pokemon game that's ever just sitting there, and even more surprisingly, I'm surprised that, like, trainers don't just casually have a shiny Pokemon. They never will. It's surprising. So... Uh, I guess you get the benefit of this Gyarados also being level 30, and so it's generally, like, and in fact, you can catch this if you have Surf. So, again, beat the 4th gym, you can just come here and grab this really high-level Gyarados. Um, which is pretty good, I'd probably say, so... He's confused, but... Oh, okay, he is gonna hit himself this time. Throw the Pokeball, you're still gonna hear the beeps. It never ends. Ah! Oh. He's gonna hit himself again? Oh, he is. Okay. Now he's in danger territory, because he can kill himself. But, I mean, I'm nearly dead, so. Does it make a huge difference? Probably not. Not at this moment. Alright, come on, Flashfly, you got this. You got this, Flashfly, you got this. Ah, oh, darn. Ah, oh, I really want to get them, though. Like, I know you can just fight them, but, like, why would you do that? Red Gyarados, it's cool. What exactly... Oh, actually, I, I feel like we're going to get that question answered uh, soonish. Don, he's going to he's gonna kill him, isn't he? Yep, okay, well. Show the Retroarch menu. Uh, I had been hiding the, the, the gooey stuff, so uh, alas, I apologize for s scrolling through a bunch of menus just then. Take two. Take two. I mean, it's gonna be take two on catching anything. Uh, for reference, the Suicune earlier as well, like he showed up and then he ran away. He'll he'll show up again. As long as you don't kill him, he'll show up. I don't think he... I don't think it keeps the, the health or any status conditions though, so yeah, if he, if he runs away after you hit him, it's not gonna change anything, which is a bit unfortunate. Dragon Ragi. That was 
Quacks are faster than, than Chicky here. Some things just don't make sense. Alright, get him on that front. But yeah, no, I, I feel very, uh, I guess, unlucky just because of how many times I'll watch someone play Pokemon and they'll have that one natural shiny that they did come across. And I'm sitting here going, I never come across shinies normally. Like, yeah, you've got this guy, but, you know, everyone comes across the, the shiny Gyarados. No one comes across the shiny Pidgey. Or any any other kind of Pokemon. There's, there's so many, so... Uh, so anyway, so the odds of the shiny, there's a 1 in 8,192 chance that your Pokemon, when it appears, your random Pokemon that appears, uh, it will be a shiny. That also includes the starter Pokemon. That includes legendaries, I believe. Uh, at least a lot of legendaries. I think nowadays, maybe maybe not so much. Um, there exist methods in later games that will increase the rate of shinies um, up to, I think, 1 in 512. They actually they made shinies more common just in X, uh, sorry, in Sword Shield. And then on top of that, the shinies, like, there's just things you can do to, to make them more common, but it's it's not perfect, um, and it's still, like, I think the best you can pull it up to is, like, 1 in, like, 384, which is definitely a, a far cry from 1 in 8,000, but it's not, you know, it's not something that's going to happen immediately, um, so, yeah, Dodos. They say that during past wars, Gyarados would appear and leave blazing ruins in its wake. Look at him, he's 24 feet tall and weighs half a thousand pounds. Uh... I'm calling him Ready. Ready. So, point is, you just gotta get rid of him, and then you will pick up this red scale. It's a key item, that's all you need, but this guy's sitting there going, Yo, this like is full of Gyarados, but nothing else. The magic cup are being forced to evolve. Do you come here because of the rumors? You be know, I'm Lance, a trainer like you. I heard some rumors, so I came to investigate. I saw the way you babbled earlier, Bando. I can tell that you're a trainer with considerable skill. If you don't mind, could you help me investigate? No. Oh, change your mind. Just please help me. Are you gonna help me? Oh, excellent. It seems that the Lex Magic Cup are being forced to evolve. A mysterious radio broadcast coming from Mahogany is the cause. I'll be waiting for you, Bando. Whoosh. So anyway, he, he buggers off, but he's in Mahogany. Now, that red scale is very, 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 very important. It's the best item in the game. Second best item in the game. Because I'm going to travel to Violet City now. Like, if you're playing this game, and you'll get this red scale, and you'll be like, oh, what's this red scale? Got? This is very important. Uh... So, first of all, we got a heal, just because, why not? This is actually going to be kind of interesting, because, uh... Yeah, because I'm going to end up in, uh... There's a dungeon coming up, and there's no HMs required. You just... Just... It's a fight the train to the dungeon, so... Uh, but... Very important. Go over here, and... I don't have a shortcut down here, do I? Oh, I do. Oh, I should have taken the cut. I should have taken the cut. Done. Hey, my boy, Chicky. Ah. Gosh. So anyway, I'm curious how many more streams it'll be to beat the game. Uh, I know we're an hour twenty-four into this stream. I have. I'm confident that the next j dungeon is going to be done in the stream. Uh, Anyway, come up to here, come up to Mr. Pokemon, he's like, Oh, that scale, what's that, Red Gyarados? Oh, that's rare, I, I want it! But you know, would you care to trade it? I can offer this experience share I got from Professor Oak. Yeah, I forgot. Get rid of the Apricorn. Don't eat it. Well, at least he didn't absolutely throw it away. So anyway, he gives you the experience share. Which is the greatest item in the game. Uh, 
Maybe not as good as the experience all in first gen Pokemon, but what you do with the experience share is that you go to you go to a person and you give them you give them this actually even better, I'm gonna give it a hot doggo because I know hot doggo is gonna get absolutely outclassed in this next dungeon. Yeah. And you give them that experience uh share. Yeah, that's what you guys. And what the experience share does is that 50% of the experience that you get in uh, a battle will go, well, sorry, will be copied uh, onto, copied? Like, you will get a bonus 50% experience onto the person who has the experience share, which means there is more experience to go around if someone has the experience share, and that is the magic of the experience share. Now, there was the experience all in first gen Pokemon where I believe, yeah, every Pokemon got half the experience. Um, yeah, that's not in this game, it's just, it's just that. It's just the experience share. Um, it does mean that you don't get your item slot on the Pokemon as well. Um, like you're using it for, uh, for this one thing. Um. Oh yeah, I've got the juicer. I keep forgetting. I got like a bunch of Pokemon that's stronger than the Juicer now. Maybe I should. Yeah, actually no. <laughs> Let's move the items. Let's put it, put it onto the Juicer. He's gonna need it. Alright. Sorry, Hot Doggo. You don't get it. Gosh! Alright. We're storing items. And I know that there's a limit on the number of items you can store as well, so this can actually get really bad, but... Uh... Let's put the Rage Candy in uh, because that's pointless. Um... I'm gonna put the berry away. Put the blue apricorn away. Uh, let's put the sharp beak because I don't think I'm gonna be able to use that. Um, I'm not gonna need the mint berry. Uh, I feel like potions are not as convenient now. And so are bitter berries. That just seems too contextual. So, anyway, that gives me a bit of space to breathe. Anyways, let's take that experience share and then put it on the juicer. Technically, any Pokemon can hold anything, but just, you know, whether that item does an effect or not is up to the item. So, uh, so anyway, what you'd have to realize is that if you go in here, Dragonite, Hyper Beam, oh my gosh, you can't hit real people. <laughs> What took you being there? Just as I thought, that strange radio signal was coming from here. Uh. <laughs> he doesn't even want to. The stairs are right here. <gasps> you know, we should split up to check this place. I'll go first. And, uh, yeah. Introducing... A very annoying dungeon. This is... Hey, Intruder Alert. This is a real annoying dungeon, I'll tell you that. So this is the rocket hideout. We've been waiting the whole game to get, you know, Team Rocket to, like, really show the, the, you know, the grunts, I guess. Uh, first round Pokemon has a couple of moments where you do have to fight Team Rocket. This game, it's rather laid back. It is mostly just this. Uh, so... This is kind of annoying. Uh, where you'd have to... Oh my gosh, well, one, you gotta fight this. But also, uh... You've, you've got to uh, pretty much grind your way through a bunch of just Team Rocket grunts through this, like, first part of the dungeon. It's one of the most, like, it's a, definitely a low part of the game where you're just required to fight these just Rocket grunts that have these very samey movesets. Also, oh, I'm not, enjoy I'm not enjoying how that ended up. In it. That's okay. Uh, let's actually go with Hot Doggo, because Hot Doggo does need the experience. Uh, remember, I'm getting Hot Doggo up to level 34. Is that? I think that's the, the goal. Just to give him Flame Wheel. Just to give him, like, a good fire attack. Um, he can't get Flame Throw at 50, but I feel like that's kind of overkill. Um, because you're probably just going to teach him, like, Fire Blast. I know Flamethrower is a great attack. 
But, yeah, no, level 50 is too late. I know I'm min-maxing, you probably do want flamethrower, but... Eh. I think dealing with flame wheels, like, reduce... You know, flame wheels got the PP. It's got that, at least. And on top of that, like... It's gonna be Arcanine. That's cool. Uh, that also does mean that level 42 I skip on agility, but I feel like there's moves I can use. In the middle. I think Fire Blast is an obvious one. Uh, Flame Wheel just as a double fire attack. Um, maybe Take Down? Well, Iron Tail, actually. Iron Tail is a, a good name. So, yeah, so each one of these statues has two Team Rocket grunts that come at you. Um, and they all have the same two Pokemon. Uh, well, the same Pokemon each. So, the first one comes out with a Drowsy and a Zubat, and then this one comes out with a Zubat, a Grimer, and a Rotata. Every time. It gets very boring. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. The rest of the dungeon, there's at least some different trainers, but... Just here, just these, uh, these statues, you just gotta fight the same trainers over and over. And you can't really dodge them, I don't think. Ah, oh, it's good stuff. Actually, I think you only have to go through, um, two of the statues. Or, or uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't changing to just a Grimer. What could he possibly do? So anyway, I think I need Hot Doggo to get as much experience as I can. Um, because... As I mentioned, we've got the Ice-type gym coming up. Uh, the Ice-type gym, surprisingly is lower level than the last gym, the Steel Gym. Uh, he's only got level 27, 29, and 31. He's got a moveset, though. He, he does have a strat. And Hot Doggo is poison, which is kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I can get the juicer up a bit uh, by having him just, like, passively gain this background experience. And that background experience, the best part, is that that doesn't drag the experience that you're getting right now. So that's just an added bonus. Uh, now, this is, this is a point that some people start to make, where it's like, is the experience share cheating? Uh, because you are getting more experience. Uh, the easy answer is no, it's an item in the game. If it was cheating, they wouldn't give it to you. Um, that was a huge point people mentioned with a Sword and Shield, because in that game, the experience share uh, oh, actually, sorry, um, X and Y, the experience share, became a key item again, and you could just turn it on or off. I believe that was it, X and Y. Um, and it would also affect, uh, maybe it was, yeah, it would affect everyone in your party, not just, um, yeah, it was X and Y. Um, it would affect everyone in your party and not just your, like, the person who sent out. I think... Yeah, so people started calling it cheating. They were like, oh, like, that's so much experience. Uh, I would argue that X and Y was designed around there being that much experience to needing to go around. It still was kind of like, I think it was a bit of an overkill game. Uh, I think, I forgot the game that I did, but I maintained three, it probably was X and Y, and I maintained three separate parties and I had them all like dancing around like that level. Ah, uh, hey, intruder alert. Uh, so I definitely say, like, you know, the games could be a lot harder, but I don't think that, you know, necessarily cheating because I got the experience yet. I'd say that this game definitely needs it, but not 100%. Like, you could just grind. All, all, all the experience stuff is doing is making it so that you don't have to grind as much. Uh, and it also gives you the ability to chuck a very low-level Pokémon. Uh, or rather, to fight a really strong trainer and have a low-level Pokémon in the back and gain a lot of experience just, like, going off there. Uh, which is great training, um, and it... It's just good for... I realize I haven't been using Bite on all of these, like, well, on just Drowsy, actually, because everything else is Poison-type. So it's not, it's not particularly better, but...
he flinched. He's not having a good time. I lost. And there comes another guy. Yet again. There's no escape. He's really, really going at me with the... With the Zubaz, I tell ya. So... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to feel about, I guess, like, things like that. I guess another thing... Do people compla uh, complain about metal slimes in Dragon Quest? Because they exist, you kill them, you get a lot of experience, and every game where they exist, getting the metal slimes is always just the fastest way to level up. By far. Is it cheating to go out and grind the metal slimes? I would argue no, because the metal slimes exist in the game. I think there's a certain extent of, uh, like, if games let you kind of skirt past the progression a bit too much, it gets a little bit weird. Um, I think some of the Dragon Quests do suffer that a bit because they introduce Metal Slimes or something else, and then the experience curve doesn't, like, balance out at a point where it makes sense. As in, like, you know, you kill a Metal Slime, you'll gain a lot of experience. It doesn't, like, you don't stop leveling, uh, like, frequently enough. Sorry. The moment where you stop leveling, like, as frequently as you probably want to, you are so far beyond the level that you probably need to be at that point, and then it balances out. Sorry, it, not it balances out, it continues going a bit, because you're gaining all that experience that you would have experienced anyway. So, we keep appearing until you trip a secret switch. So yeah, here's an actual trainer. Actual guy. Still unlucky, punk? Go ahead, take another step. We've got traps set in the floor. I'd make the case that it's like, it's just game design. You're not cheating if it's really just sitting in the game. This guy has four retarders, by the way. Very original. They're all the same level, and they're all the same gender. In fact, this is a minor point, but I feel like doesn't every Team Rocket person have male Pokemon? They're exclusively male. I don't know what they're, like, going for on that one. Ah, just pull, pull the muscle on my throat. Ah. Oh well. So I, I don't know what they're going with on the, on the whole males in Team Rocket. It's not even that all the grunts are male. There's definitely female ones later on as well, but the Pokemon can't be not male. Oh gosh, Hot Doggo is not having a fun time on this one. Isn't the juice still level 16? I guess because I'm only fighting level 16, so I guess it's that. I'm gonna send Babat out. Alright, Babat, let's have a go at it. I will continue to use Bite. Oh, what is that? Oh, I've got Wing Attack. Why am I not just using Wing Attack? I'm, I don't have Wing Attack. I don't know why I thought I had Wing Attack. Okay. Ooh. So I'm curious what level Babat's gonna evolve. I usually find it's around level 30, but... Who knows? I've been walking around with Babat for a while. So anyway... What these traps are, is that every single one of them, if you stand on them... There's a... Geodude. Or, or there's some other Pokémon. Uh, you can... Not escape. The Geodude. The Geodude is eternal. Oh, my left ear is really enjoying that surf, isn't it? I guess you could catch the level 21 Geodude if you really wanted to. That Geodude gave much more experience than anything else, like, up to this point. 
so... Anyway, let's, let's wander back. You can't bike as well. Just to, just to add insult to injury, but... At the very least, it's not like the, the statues come back, so... I'm thinking this this will probably be a good checkpoint. I think the gym will be maybe a bit uh, a bit too much for the the part, but we'll definitely be able to clear out this place. All right, so wander into this little lanky thing. You got this little scientist here. He's like, "Yo, this was once a ninja hideout. There are traps to confound intruders like you, ninja hideout." Yes, that's right. Team Rocket are actually, you know, discreet. Discreet ninjas. Uh, this guy has a Magnemite. It's level 20. You know, 10 levels less than the gym leader that I had fought earlier. And I could just use flame, you know, ember on it. And it's gone. But he's got three Pokemon. He's at least got, like, you know, a strat that he can use. Oh wait, no, it's another Magnemite. Sorry. My bad. Well, time to melt that Magnet as well. Oh, really? Really? He's got Sturdy? Give him a bite. Give him a once-over. Maybe Hot Doggo being one more level will help. Oh, he is, try he is trying to learn Takedown. Alright, cool. Uh, listen, as much as, like, Raw is a meme of a moon, it's also... I, I just contextually have no use for Raw. Also, he's still got Magmite. <laughs> oh, man. He's a Magmite household. You can't yell at him on that one. Well, we'll, we'll see what level the juicer ends up by the end of this. Uh, anyway, here's a fun fact. If you go up to the computer... Secret switch, better press it. And that actually turns off the the statues. So there's three more statues if you really wanted to fight that level, you know, level 17 drowsy three more times. You get the option to do so if you really wanted to, but listen, there's one thing to not fight trainers, there's another thing to not fight the same trainers. Every time. I didn't want to do that, so save the hassle. Let's not do it. Plus I'm over level this hack. Not over well, not as hack, but. But coming around this way, still, you get the nuggets, you get that stuff, rather than having to fight those wild trainers. Uh, wild trainers? Don't stand on that, that sends you all the way back out. Are you alright? Your Pokemon are hurt and tired. Here, give them some of my medicine. Let's give it our best for Pokemon. Sure, okay. So, we got this doors closed, it needs a password to open. Uh, other than that, we got Standardy Dungeon. It's actually not too confusing a dungeon as well, it's rather simple, but you do gotta fight a lot of Team Rockets, so this guy's got a Venonet. Uh, Venonet, for those who know, is susceptible to the hot, so uh... Oh my gosh, that, why does this keep happening? Oh, he's not good at it, so... Uh, no, no, I'm not gonna be using takedown like a ton. Uh, it's a good move, it's a pretty good move, but... The self-damage is definitely one thing to kind of watch out for when you're doing more casual fights like this. Take him down! Take him downtown. Oh, the juice is level 19. He's gained 5 levels just by sitting there. Good on him. Is Extrusia 50% or is it actually the whole thing? I wasn't paying attention. Only, only I know the password, he says. Like, naively. Ah. Uh, 
Good old Golbat. I really do appreciate this, like, Team Rocket having an actual plan and not just like we somehow took over a building. It's like, hey, they're doing a secret operation in a secret area to do something. Are they just trying to get, like, strong Gyarados? Is that what they're going for? I haven't actually paid attention to this strat. Or are they, they... trying to make uh, Red Gyarados scales to... you know, to make money? No, they can't, because that Red Gyarados is just kind of lucky. Alright. Well, they get the same amount of experience. Okay, well, maybe you double your experience. Okay. I take back the 50%. Hi there. It takes two passwords to get into the boss's quarters. Those passwords are known only to a few rockets. That rocket there very graciously told me so. You know, let's go get the passwords. I love how you talk to him again. It's like, oh, the guy in the cave is incredibly tough. I I love this idea of just like also presenting uh, Lance. He used to work for Silk, but now I run research for Team Rocket. A meddlesome child like you needs to be punished. Uh. I, I just love the idea of, like, Lance being there and just, like, you see him wreck everyone. Like, he doesn't even sway. He doesn't even worry that he can't do this. He's just like, I'm, I'm going in. I'm taking everyone down with me. Well, not even with him, because he, he, he's not going down, but... You know what I mean? Like, I, I love that idea of presenting um, Lance, who I think... I think you can guarantee is like Lance is the champion. You know he's gonna be he's gonna show up later in the end. Um, it's like all the uh was it the dragon type gym leader was just like there on the, the coast earlier. It's like yeah. I'm gonna get poison, aren't I? Ooh. Critical hit. This one guy's a bit left field. He's got like two level 22 coffins. No one else is like particularly like that high level, aren't they? Uh. I'm going no on boy. Because I feel like no on boy is probably going to be a little bit outclassed. I don't know, actually. I, I, I'm not too sure what to predict for the rest of, uh,. Uh, the rest of what's gonna go on, but hey, I can always just use surf. Level 20 already, bro. A mere tactical error. Also, like, they asked for a thousand dollars at the beginning, and it's like, do I know the password? Maybe. But no weakling's gonna get it. They, they asked for a thousand dollars to get into the Lake of Rage earlier, and then it's like, this guy's just got like two thousand dollars like on him. The scientists are just... very rich. Anyway, she's got Neckins. You know what that means. Just... just fire. Oh, but he's got the Stinger! What kind of snake has a Stinger? Maybe there are snakes with Stingers out there. Who knows? Not, not enough experience, it's not good stuff. Gloom and gloom! Oh. You can't absorb me, that's illegal. that on that person. Alright, stop, I'll tell you. And then you go, the password the boss's room is Slowpoke Tail, but it's useless unless you have two passwords. So, at least this person's kind enough to tell you that. There's a few items sitting around here as well. Nothing... Actually, there are, there are a couple of ones out there. There's a staircase over there. We've got another item over here. Ice heal, you know, the goods. Scientists around the corner, where else are they gonna be? Okay, that Pokemon are getting hurt! Wow. 
Mitch. Uh-oh. He's got the ditto. Now, is Mitch very aware of the uh, Blendo strat of using Leer? And then, of course, Ditto's going to transform into you, so he transforms into a Ditto. Sorry, into a Rowlet. I love how the color palette is also kept the same. It's very nice. Good touch. Uh, and then I'm going to proceed to send a water type out. So, yeah, the meme with Ditto is that he transforms into your Pokemon, takes all your stats, and also your moveset. Uh, I think scaled within the level, so it might be, might still be restricted to what level 24s would, uh, would have stat-wise. Uh, also only 5 PP on every move, so he can't absolutely spam everything, but... Uh, he also takes the type, which means he became Fire-type for a moment. Good old Ditto. Classic Pokemon. That's actually, like, you know, remarkably, like, unique. The, something that first gen has, you know? If you beat me, I'll tell you the password. He's got Raticate. Give him a bit of a toasting. Oh, I didn't plan for that. Yeah, I was like, oh, like, Raticate, what what could he possibly do? Yeah, <laughs> Let's do it, Babat, let's get in there. Give him the, the bite. The bite of 87 right there. Uh, the bite of 88? Yeah, okay, sure. Soon I'll be getting to this point where Growlithe is the underleveled one on the team. Password of the boss's room, uh, I think it's Raticate Tail. I got a thing with tails in this game, apparently. Dire Hit, the most practical item in the game. And the Full Hill, which is actually alright. I don't mind Full Hills. Full Hills are fine. Some people, like, knock on them, I guess, because they're not healing moves, but... You know, they're rather cheap catch-all items, and in the age of limited inventory space, that's probably not too bad to, to have. Uh, I'm going to ignore that extra staircase, and instead I'm going to go back up to heal, because I do know I'm going to need a bunch of, you know, a bit more health. I've got a bit of time, so that's alright. Well, it's not like I'm ending, like, right on, you know, 10.30pm, but, you know, you try to wrap it up. You try to see where you get done. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, but no, I, I, I kind of like this dungeon. Like, after you get past the, you know, these, once you've, once you've figured out that those are in the way, it's not too bad, actually. And I, I kind of like that there's a good variety of, like, the, the trainers that you fight, well, the Pokemon that they have. Uh, yay, yeah. No, it's, a, it's a good dungeon. If anything as well, it's a bit, like, long needed. There's not that many dungeons, like, pre-game here. It, it, I love how it still needs the password despite being told both the passwords already, but sure. Uh, so anyway, the other door is up, or well, the other staircase is up here. So this leads up a bit. Uh, there's a computer over here. I'm a computer. There's a full hill just casually sitting there as well, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can you can see the, the gimmick of what's going to happen right now as well. Well, not right now, but in a little bit. Uh, for, for the moment... They put a trainer just a bit out of sight here. So, oh, kid? Oh, I don't really like this, but I must eliminate child. Destroy the child. <laughs> He's got a Rattata. Again. <laughs> I don't really have much of a much of an opinion here at Team Rocket. Again, all male. Every time. Get that hot doggo just gaining that experience. He needs to get up there. He does need to get up there, because as, as I said, level... Oh, the worst part as well is that, yeah, I, I just realized... I mean, hot doggo it needs to be really good against one of their Pokemon. The other two 
a water type. Actually, no, one of them's not even ice type. But like, one's water ice, the other is water. Me having hot doggo here doesn't really, like, save Grace Dead. Although, none of them know water type attacks. They all know ice type attacks, you're gonna expect that, but... I don't know, you're not gonna... You're not gonna suffer too hard by having a fire type thrown out in there. It's just... Yeah, good luck dealing damage when you're the fire type and they're the, the water types. I'm worried I'm also gonna get that during the gym as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna get that during the gym. Oh well. That'll be good fun. I knew I'd lose. Well, why'd you try? Anyways, uh, head down here and notice this wonderful... Oh! Didn't I tell you that I was going to destroy Team Rocket? Tell me, who is the guy in the cape who used Dragon Pokemon? My Pokemon were no match at all. I don't care that I lost. I could beat him by getting stronger Pokemon. That's what he said that bothers me. He told me that I don't love and trust my Pokemon enough. I'm furious that I lost to a bleeding heart like him. Hmm, I don't have the time for the likes of you. And he just... <laughs> he, he comes up, pushes you, gives you a lecture, and buggers off. So anyway, enter the door, and... What, who are you? This is the office of our leader, Giovanni. Since disbanding Team Rocket three years ago, he has been in training. But we're certain he will be back someday to assume command again. That's why we're standing guards. I won't let anyone disturb this place. And he comes at you. Also with the regular music. And yeah. So anyway, this is a Rocket Executive. He's a little bit up there. He's got some Pokemon, but... Honestly, again... Uh... You can, you can fight this guy after the fourth gym, and they knew that, and they let you go with him. So, uh, this guy has my moveset. He's actually got my Zubat's moveset. So, he's got Confused Ray, Supersonic, Bite, Leech Life. Nothing different. Um, probably should be Gold Bat by now. Level 22. He's at that point. Ah, oh, the one turn confusion. It's always a great feeling. Oh, he's got a Raticate now. Raticate, uh, classic Hyper Fang, Quick Attack, Scary Face, and Tail Whip. Uh, a very typical Raticate moveset, you know. The normal type attacks that are never that nice to go up against. Um, but I did burn him. I did burn him. And that's always a good feeling. I'm actually going to switch out on this one. Uh, we'll go for Fluffer. I feel like I haven't given Fluffer any, like, time in this, in this video. Proceeds to get hyperfanged, but... I, I, I do enjoy this dungeon. It, it just exists, you, you get a little bit of an arc. The fact that you have your rival there as well show up, um, like, I think really builds that character. Because that's what he's supposed to be, is that he's, he's very motivated to, um, to upset uh, his father, Giovanni. And uh, in doing so, he kind of, uh, well, I mean, he does the bad deed of... I, I didn't play for this one. Uh, Smog, Tackle, Sludge, uh, sludge and Self-Destruct, so uh... <coughs> Rip the experience there. I guess the juice will get some, but... Eh. <coughs> oh my gosh, I just breathe a little bit. Ugh. Anyway, point is... No, I can't let this affect me. I have to inform the others. Whoosh! It's a... Ooh. Talk to the bird, the password is... Hail Giovanni! Cool. Cool bird. It, it's a bit weird. That's a crow. Steal Pokemon for profit. Exploit Pokemon for profit. All Pokemon exist for the glory of Team Rocket. Oh. 
Anyway, over here I believe is one lingering item. TM46. Which one is this one? Uh, this is Thief. Of course you get it. Of course you get Thief here. Why wouldn't you? Anyway, time to wander back and I'm actually going to switch to a... I'm going to switch to no one boy at the front. It's not too large a dungeon, and no wild Pokemon makes it, you know, a treat to walk through, which is, I guess, something that a lot of Pokemon dungeons seem to forget about. Like, uh, the, um... Enter the password, and I'm in. Hold it right there! Yeah. We can't have a brat like you on the loose. It's harmful to Team Rocket's pride, you see. However strong you may be, you can't take both of us on the same time. Sorry, baby, now get ready to be thrashed. Uh. Hey, don't be so selfish. Spread the fun around. What? You had an accomplice? Where is your sense of honor? As the interim boss in place of Giovanni, I'll show you how wrong it is to meddle with Team Rocket. And you get two on one. Well, two on two. So, you only have to fight one of these two people. Uh, but they are another executive, so... We're gonna come at you with at least kind of strong Pokemon. Uh, so there's a little Arbok. It's level 23, it's got Leo Bite, Wrap, and Poison Sting. That is nothing to worry about at all. In fact, I don't think any of these are as bad as the last trainer, if, if anything. You ever find it's weird in the anime? They always, like, it's always, you know, Arbok will always call himself Charbok. There's always a Char in there. I hope you appreciate that baseline. It's not really bass, is it? Oh well. Yes, I am going up against Gloom with a water type. Yes, I have just made a terrible mistake. Yeah, okay. Stop it. <laughs> I'm worried Hot Doggo is not going to, like, take it. But I was thinking, like, hey, if I send the water type out, then it's bound to use the fire. Or, oh, sorry, bound. Sorry. Yeah, if I send Quagsar out, he's 100% baiting to use the grass attack. Even if it is just absorb, and it's not really gonna. Like, that wouldn't have killed him, anyways, but. You know, what else would I have done? Uh, this gloom has sweet scent, absorb, acid, and sleep powder. Sweet scent is very. Who cares? It's, 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 it's not that. Not that good a move if you're not, you know, up in your evasiveness. Acid would have probably messed me over, or sleep powder, but we'll take it. And the last one is Murkrow. Uh, I can't use Fluffer right now, so, um... Uh... Yeah, we'll go back to Noam Boy on this one. Little Murkrow. Gotta love him. Uh, he knows Peck, Haze, and Pursuit. Nothing too fancy, but probably don't switch out, because you know the AI is going to cheat with Pursuit. <laughs> Mokro is a fun one. I love Mokro. Mokro is a great Pokemon. Give me even another evolution in 4th gen is a bit interesting. Uh... Says the guy with the munchlax on the screen all the time, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, that's that Rocket exec. Tish, you are really strong. It's too bad if you were to join Team Rocket, you could become an executive. Now that would be a fun Pokemon game. This hideout is done for, but that's fine. The broadcast experiment was a total success. It doesn't matter what happens to this hideout now. We have much bigger plans. You'll come to appreciate Team Rocket's true power soon enough. Enjoy yourself while you can. foo 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 you know. That did it! We defeated all the rockets here, but I'm concerned about the young guy I battled in the process. Sorry, Bino. I saw how well you were doing, so I just hung back. No all there is to do is to turn off that old radio signal. Like, what a bro! Like, just goes, hey, you, you're having fun. It's this machine that's causing all the problems. I don't see a switch on it. We have no choice. We have to kill the Pokemon! I'll make it stop transmitting the signal. It's no fault of the Pokemon, so it makes me feel guilty. Let's split the job. Now let's both be responsible for it. 
Alright. Uh, so yeah, you have to go up to all three of these electrodes and get rid of them somehow. Uh, so like the Gyarados, you can, I guess, catch it. Uh, all these electrodes know Tackle, Screech, Sonic Boom, and Self-Destruct and are all level 23. So that means no electric attacks, uh, which is, I mean, I wouldn't be concerned about it with no on boy here, but uh, you should probably be concerned about, um, well, one, Electrode is... Is he the fastest Pokemon in this game? He was in first gen. He's so incredibly fast. You wouldn't expect it, but no, he is. Um, it's good experience, I guess, because Electrode, you know, he's evolved. He's level 23. Sure. Uh, but him knowing self-destruct is... It's a bit eh. Uh, you could probably... I don't know if you've had the opportunity to catch Voltorb yet. Um, but... That's the other thing as well, is that, like, there's nothing special about these electrodes. Um, so... If you do kill them, it's no... no concern. They're just... they're just electrodes. That's it. I'm waiting for one of them to actually use self-destruct. Like, do they think they can't get the kill unless they use Screech twice? Maybe that's it. Maybe they just... Oh, they're weird electrodes. Thank you, Juza. Alright. Third electrode. So yeah, there's bits of this dungeon that I didn't like at the beginning. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's warmed on me. It's good fun. I think that's what every Pokemon dungeon needs. No wild encounters. Doesn't, like, Sylphco not have encounters? In, like, first gen? But then, yeah, you get, like, the Pokemon Mansion. Mount Moon. And it's just like, oh, uh, it's, it's like doubling up. No one likes to double up. You play, like, any other RPG, and it's like, oh, there's, like... It's not like you gotta do a boss rush, like, all the time. I think people don't like, like, when you gotta do a boss rush, and you've got a dungeon that has enemies that, like, wreck you all the time. Cough, cough, some of the early Final Fantasies. Oh my gosh, jeez. Was it 3 I played? Final Fantasy 3? And it actually has, like, you have to go through a dungeon and then you have to fight five bosses? Or something like that. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. I don't think I need Encore. Encore is too, too selective, so. I feel like Safeguard's also kind of selective, but, yeah, okay. Well, I did it. Mass murder. That odd signal has finally stopped. The lake should be back to normal. You're the hero. Let me thank you on behalf of all the Pokémon. Oh yes, you should take this. I found it there, but I don't have any need for it. And he gives you HMO6. Now, that's Whirlpool. I believe you don't have the ability to use it until after you beat this gym. Um... Keep this in mind, you can use that out of battle, only with the badge from Mahogany Gym. Yeah, okay, there you go. And, uh, the journey to becoming the Pokemon Master is long and difficult. Knowing that, will you keep going? I see. No, you're right. If you would give up that easily, you would have never chased that dream in the first place. I look forward to seeing you again. What a bro. He's an absolute champ. Like, that... I love Lance. He's just... supportive. It's great. Keeps you... keeps you going. Anyways, with that, uh, the people disappear from this place, although you still can always go in and just say hi. Uh, if you're missing any of the items, you can go back for them, but there's no wild Pokemon, there's no trainers anymore. So, it's kind of just there. So, you know, it's a cool dungeon, you gotta do it now, well, sorry, like, you know, now that you got it, the person blocking the gym is also gone, so. Uh, but other than that, I'll call it a stream. That was a good stream. Thank you very much for watching, uh, sticking around, and uh, yeah, just just chilling, vibing, having a good time. It's good stuff. So, with that, thank you all very much. Uh, yeah, if if you're on Twitch right now, follow. Uh, if you just want to watch me stream at the same time every week at 8:30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Mondays. Uh, if you're on YouTube. Uh, and see my bots. Um, other than that, there may be fun, more fun content in upcoming times. I mean, I'll be a stream next week. I can guarantee that one. Uh, also, yeah, I'm right in front of the seventh gym. There's one more gym after this game. I think I 
think I'm not going to be able to do the 8th gym, because there's definitely some stuff happening after this gym, but, you know, I'm tending, I'm tending to the end of this game, we're, we're definitely getting kind of close, so, uh, with that, yeah, thank you all very much for watching, have a safe one, have a good rest of your week, and stay frosty, stay well, and vibe hard, have a good one.